Right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to something a little different today. I'm with Royal Ascot winning jockey Thor Hammer Hansen. Thor, how are you? Yeah, very good. And you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. So today I'm going to go through the Ascot stakes with Thor, his big Ascot success last week. We're going to talk about the race and some of his thoughts behind it. So Thor, just jumping off, you jumped out of stall nine, I do believe it was. You had um, Adam Kirby next door to you on um, Dubai 50, um, that's it. Was the plan to, to drop in behind or was the plan maybe to go forward, knowing your horse did stay the trip quite well? Um, yes, you ran in the race last year and we just thought, uh, jump him out wherever he's happy, get a bit of cover on him, seeing he has the vices on for the first time, see where we end up um, and just ride him to stay because we, we just thought he didn't quite get the trip last year. So um, I jumped him out and I ended up being further behind than I actually wanted to be. But I was tracking Moon King, um, who was quite fancied in the race. I was always happy for the race. In terms of your position at the moment here, I'm just seeing you're next to David Probert here on Andrew Balding Horse. It took a couple of glances to your right. Was there a slight concern that he was trying to get a gap there early doors and potentially you just trying to keep him just sort of towards your right-hand side? Um, to be honest, I was trying to get in just one off the rail just to save a little bit of ground. But um, Colonel Leon is a horse that doesn't really like to be too crowded, so I wasn't too worried of uh, to be staying three away, to be honest. In terms of cars coming past the stands now, what was that like going past the empty stands? You said you rode in, the, rode in the race last year, so it must have been a completely different scenario this time around. Yeah, I mean, last year we passed the stands and the ground was shaking. There was that many people there and the atmosphere was just unbelievable. So obviously it was a little bit different this year, but um, hey, it's still Royal Ascot, so... So in terms of just coming down the back now, um, Frankie seems to take a pull on the leader and you seem to stack up in behind. Is that always a positive for you, just to try and find your feet um, throughout the middle, middle part of the race, to just to try and get back on terms with the rest of the field here? Because you're still towards the back of the field here with David Pro, but again, still next to you. So is that a help when a, when a jockey takes a pull in a, in a long distance race like this? Yeah, I suppose it steadies everyone down a small bit. I, um, I suppose the horse that could be a small bit keen, um, it wouldn't help them, but Frankie's just trying to slow it down for his horse um, and it, it helped me because he was in a lovely rhythm and I always had a horse to aim him at so um, he, he didn't grab the bridle too hard this time so, so I was really happy when that happened. I mean the pace has dropped now, you've got a few horses here still very, who are still very keen so room's quite tight. I noticed David Probert in a second, he just pulls his horse out and it sort of knocks you back a, a position or two. Was that a slight concern then, potentially being on the back foot, knowing that if you go into Swindley Bottom, they tend to start racing pretty early over this longer trip. So was that a slight concern for you? Um, I saw Dave was struggling a little bit, and uh, he asked me to kindly let him out, and uh, I, I really had to. So, um, of course, it wasn't it wasn't the best thing for my horse, but um, it didn't matter in the end. And, and I suppose I'm always trying to help everyone out, same as I hope they would to me. So it didn't really matter in, in that minute. So just quick, is there any jockeys who tend to not let you out sometimes? Is there ones who sort of stick to their racing lines and will obviously not give you the gap? Or, or, or do most jockeys seem to be quite uh, good in that scenario? Uh, I suppose everyone tries and hold their position for as long as possible because um, everyone wants to win the race. But um, in general, if someone is really struggling and, and you can see something bad happening in front of you, you generally just um, let the person out and give them the gap. In terms of now, we're into Swinley Bottom now. Joe Fanning's obviously taken the lead on Summer Moon, I do believe, or do believe it was, and the pace has taken a notable increase. You're still towards the back of the field. You've got Sam Benedetto next to you. I think you've got um, the horse in fourth there with Tim Cox in behind. Is there a sort of thought in your head that you could get outpaced and maybe if one was to get away, like Ryan Moore, he's on the inside, he's got a good position. If he was to get away from you, was there a slight worry that you might not be able to peg him back? No, I, I saw the increase the pace um, up the front and I was really happy because... Um, Kurt Leon is, is one of them horses, if he sort of travels too strongly, they're going too slow for him. He kind of wants to just be a little bit behind the bridle and not travel too strongly at all. Um, so I was really happy they, they picked up speed like that. And seeing as I was so far behind the pace, um, I, I knew I was always going to stay. So I was really happy when that happened. So just, we just turned in now and you've, you've come pretty wide this time around. I think last year you went sort of towards the inside and the gaps weren't there. So was there a plan to avoid a potential trouble on the inside and sort of come wide knowing you, you do stay quite well? Yes. Um, last year I, I had to go uh, in between two horses and it was a little bit tight and he seemed to just back out a small bit. So I, I was always going to look for more room this year. I, I didn't plan to go as wide, but... The opportunity was there, and I just took it then, and, and he seemed to pick up. Feeling down the outside, was there always the impression he was going to get to Ryan Moore? Because he sort of made his move slightly after you did. You obviously came quite wide, and he was in behind Joe Fanning, so he's on the inside. But was you quite confident you was always going to get to him before the line came? 
I thought turning in, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do really well to finish fourth or fifth here. And, um, he seemed to pick up a lot better than he did last year throughout all his races. And as, as I got to the furlong pole, I knew I was going to get there and I was just praying that nothing was going to come from behind. So once you got to the line, you've crossed the line. I saw a punch of the air from you there as well. Royal Ascot winning jockey, it must be a magnificent thing to, to have next to your name now. What was that like crossing that winning line? Um, it was unbelievable. I mean, obviously there was no crowd there, but it's something that every jockey dreams of. And um, look, I've been dreaming of, of having a Royal Ascot ride since I was a child, never mind winning. So it was just unbelievable. I got, I got a, a great buzz out of it and I'm just really happy that, that it all happened the way it did. And just finally, to conclude with, that must open up, open up a few um, doors now for Kurt Leon. In terms of where would you possibly look to try and maybe look to take him next, uh, throughout the rest of the season? I know it's down to Alan King, of course, but is there anything, uh, another race that you, you might think could suit him potentially later on down the line? Um, yeah, obviously that's completely up to Mr King and, and how he goes at home and, and if he does everything well at home. But um, I suppose um, the staying race at Goodwood would be quite an obvious target um, and then just see wherever the, the long distance handicaps um, could take us throughout the end of the year. But like I said, 